On the 3rd of June 1998, the normally quiet German town of Eschede would become the center of headlines all around the world. At 10.59am, a passing intercity express train traveling at more than 200 km per hour veered off the track, killing 101 people in what would be, still to this day, the world's worst high-speed train disaster. Having departed Munich at 5.45am, ICE or Intercity Express Train 884 was in its final 40 minutes of the almost 6 hour journey time to Hamburg. Hamburg, seated on the River Alba between the North and Baltic Seas, is a popular holiday spot for Germans during the summer months and the train was full of holiday makers and business travellers alike. Reaching speeds as high as 300 km an hour and equipped with a cafe and restaurant car, many people chose to take the ICE over air travel for its comfort and convenience and the ability to move around the train freely. Shortly before 11am, ICE train 884 with 287 passengers and 8 crew was 6 km south of the town of Eschede. Passengers in the front carriage were shaken by the sudden sound of a loud bang. Moments later, a long mysterious strip of steel pierced up through the floor and in between two seats where passengers were sitting. There was now a gaping hole in the floor and the long strip of steel continued to scrape along the ground below causing damage to the track as the train raced along at more than 200 km per hour. The carriage began vibrating violently. One of the passengers went back to the third carriage where they alerted the train's conductor. However, despite explaining the chaos happening up in coach 1, the conductor was reluctant to stop the train, explaining that Deutsche Bahn, the operator of ICE, have a policy that he must personally inspect the situation before bringing the train to a halt. It took them around one minute to reach the first carriage, but before they made it to the damaged section, the train began to sway violently Despite this, the conductor was still reluctant to stop the train. By this time, the train was now passing through Eschede and still travelling at more than 200 km per hour. It was at this point that the train crossed over a set of turnout points, and as it did, the long strip of steel still scraping along the track scooped up the guardrail that ran alongside the turnout points. The guardrail in turn stabs up through the floor of the first carriage, lifting up the back wheel set and causing the front two cars to derail. The derailed wheels would then cause the turnout points to change direction, causing the carriages behind to veer off onto an adjacent line. The speed in which it was moving and the outward pressure applied by the sudden change of direction caused the third carriage to jump off the track and hit a support beam of the road bridge above. The first four carriages, although derailed, managed to make it clear of the bridge, with the fourth car rolling into the embankment. The 300 ton road bridge above, having just had its support pillar taken out by the chaos below, now begins to collapse. Most of coach 5, and all of coach 6, is crushed under the falling concrete while the remaining six cars all jackknife into the rubble at high speed, and eight carriages are left occupying the space the length of just one carriage. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, the residents of the nearby houses were the first on the scene. Many described having thought a plane had crashed, the noise was so horrific. Some of the older residents described how the sound had brought back memories from World War II. More than a thousand rescue workers, as well as local residents, all worked through the afternoon, into the night, and to the following day to rescue survivors from the rubble and wreckage. When all was said and done, 101 people had lost their lives in the accident, including two track maintenance workers who had been carrying out track work at the time. 88 other passengers had serious injuries, and countless others with mild injury. In the days following the tragedy, investigators combed wreckage and debris for clues to the accident. 
they managed to find the mysterious strip of steel that had stabbed up through Coach 1 in the minutes leading up to the accident. Investigators quickly identified the strip of steel as being a steel tyre from one of the train's wheels. Unlike most trains whose wheels were made of a single piece of steel, the German ICE trains had been fitted with duo-block wheels. This type of wheel had a thin strip of rubber on the outside of the wheel, then further steel tyre on top of the rubber. The duo-block wheel was chosen by Deutsche Bahn as it was believed it offered a smoother ride than conventional type wheels, however, it had never been used before on high-speed trains. The broken wheel and its steel tyre were sent away for forensic testing. It was discovered that as a result of metal fatigue, the steel tyre had developed a small hairline fracture that eventually got so big that it finally disintegrated on the day of the accident. Metal fatigue fractures take months or years to develop, so investigators were keen to find out why Deutsche Bahn engineers had not picked up the developing cracks prior to the accident. Furthermore, a search through the train's maintenance logs revealed that there had been as many as eight recent reports filed by train staff regarding unusual noise and vibration coming from the wheel set in question. Investigators would learn that Deutsche Bahn did have sophisticated metal detection equipment. However, technicians did not use it because they believed it gave too many false positive readings. Accident investigators were shocked to learn that Deutsche Bahn technicians had been carrying out wheel inspections with nothing more advanced than a flashlight. Investigators concluded the maintenance inspection on the wheels had not been adequate, and in August of 2002, two Deutsche Bahn engineers and one employee from the wheels manufacturer go on trial. They would be charged with negligent homicide and bodily harm. Deutsche Bahn themselves are off the hook, as in Germany, only people can be tried. After an eight-month trial, it ends in controversy. There is no guilty verdict, but the three men are ordered to pay a fine of around 10,000 euros each as compensation. Deutsche Bahn offered to pay the families of those killed around 15,000 euros each, an offer that was met with much anger and disappointment. This concludes the story of the Escheder train derailment, the world's worst high-speed train disaster.